Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third training in NERC's DE&I training series. Today's training is about creating your DE&I path. And um, my name is Mary Ann Raymolador. I'm the assistant director for NERC, and I am delighted that you are able to join us today and be part of this training. We do ask something of you, and that's to share, to share the information that you gain from today with as many people as you can, whether it's colleagues or family or friends. Um, the training will be uh, recorded, as you might have just heard. The recording will be available online afterwards as well as the presentation, but it may take me a day or two to get things posted. I will send you a link to that information when it is available. Can you go to the next slide, Robin? I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, ISRI for sponsoring the trainings, and NWRA and Revolution for sponsoring NERC's work on DE&I. Next slide. I'd also like to recognize the training series planning committee who worked with me to help develop all of the, the four trainings in our series and help us also with identifying potential presenters and our trainers for the different trainings. And before we get, actually, I'd like to um, tell you a little bit about our trainer. Her name is Robin Afric. Robin is the director of the Ottawa County Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And with over 280,000 residents and the third fastest growing county, the office convenes key relationships with local community business and policy leaders to lead and develop a DEI strategic plan. Robin is responsible for assessing implicit bias in current policies and decision-making processes with a goal to operationalize DEI throughout the organization. She serves on many committees and boards, including the Supreme Court Administrative Office and Michigan Judicial Institute's DNI Committee and the National Association of Counties DNI Directors Network. She's a graduate of Cornerstone University Michigan State University and holds a public leadership certification from Cornell. And before I turn things over to Robin, I want to just conduct a quick poll, and I'm launching it now, to ask you if you've attended our either of our first two DEI trainings. We just want to get some feel. Okay, looks like we've got a lot of newcomers for this one, um, but the results are still coming in. I'm going to give you another few seconds to respond. So we ended up with 54% of you having attended one of our previous trainings and 46% are newcomers, so welcome to everyone. And now I'd like to um, turn things over to Robin. Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me okay and see me okay? Yes. I know I can't see everybody, so. <laughs> yeah, we can see you and hear you. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. And I recognize that I cannot see anything other than my screen. So um, I just want to make sure Marianne, you're my right hand person here. So yeah. welcome, everybody. And, and Mary, thank you for the wonderful um, uh, invitation to spend time with all of you today. Um, and I thought before you know, we really dive in knowing that there have been some, you know, individuals have returned and some individuals who are brand new, which is always wonderful. I wanted to walk through just a quick agenda given the time frame that we have today. So um, I, let's just make sure this is working here. I apologize, one second. Oops, 
There we go. So for today, when Marianne had reached out to me, she said, hey, you know, Robin, can we think about putting a, a workshop together that's specifically for individuals who are trying to better understand and identify their individual roles in incorporating DE&I into their work lives, but really focusing on the fact that some of you may not have a priority, whether it's stated or very clear. And so some of this might trickle into your personal lives or how you personally want to show up and still make a difference. So um, knowing that that is the framework for today, and also because many of you are attending uh, in, 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 in very different spaces when it comes to your personal and professional DE&I path, it's important for you to note that this workshop will really stem from this lens that I always say, you can't reconcile what you don't recognize. So today's material really is meant to, again, introduce you to frameworks. And how I say frameworks, really, they're conceptual structures or ideas that kind of help us first recognize where we are in them. And then it also provides a structure that helps us reconcile on our ability or our need to act. So I do plan on sharing at least three frameworks um, to apply to your current situation, regardless, right, of where you see yourself, whether it's an expert in this work or you're still probably asking what day it is in the DNI world. And trust me, that happens regardless. So we will be doing some of um, the framework sharing. Uh, we'll go over some of the objectives that this workshop uh, has requested. I also wanna cover some definitions and the importance of that. And we're gonna try to keep this very lively and active with discussion at the time and, and Q and A. So I'm going to go here. All right. So we have four objectives. And again, this goes right back to what uh, Marianne had asked me to uh, work with. So we want to develop a deeper understanding and an awareness of DE&I. We also want to analyze the importance of our path and process by which we got here. Um, it's really hard to know how we're going to move forward if we don't really pay attention to how we actually, you know, got on the path we were in. We want to advance our thinking about DE&I. And again, that's so contextual based on how you're defining uh, where you've started and where you want to go. And then how do we incorporate this work into our work lives? Again, assuming that not everybody has a stated priority or maybe a job title that's tied to it. So the first question here is, we want to talk about some definitions. If you want to put into the chat box, um, how are you currently defining diversity? And this is you personally, how do you define diversity? And I'm just gonna have Marianne be able to help maybe read some of these. And then we'll even take a couple um, individuals, if there's people who want to speak, just raise your little hand. I think there's a hand icon and Marianne can call on you if there's something you'd like to share as well. So we'll give this a few minutes. I'm seeing socioeconomic status, mental health, recognizing views that are different than yours, learning abilities, recognizing differences, different points of views and ways of thinking, um, people with different backgrounds, gender identity, variety, uh, multitudes, allowing room for differences, urban rural spectrum, inclusion of differing perspectives. different backgrounds. So I'm just going to check here to see. Um, I don't see any raised hands, just all of, um, all of the entries in the chat box. Okay, wonderful. 
So there's themes, right, Mary? You can sense a few themes here. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's great. And this helps me understand too, I think where the group is at. So now that we sort of have that definition of diversity, sorry, let's also think about how you define equity. So once again, feel free to throw some definitions into the chat box, or if you would like to share verbally, you can raise your little hand icon. Fairness, equality, equal opportunity, not equal distribution. Meeting people where they are, level the playing field. Not equality, but providing help for differences and unique needs. Fair opportunities and justice, accommodating all. Same opportunities a rule and rules apply the same to all. Address, addressing past injustices. Equality of opportunity, not outcome. Fairness for all income levels. Understanding that people start out in different places but are not inherently equal. Access applying the same respect to each and every person. Okay. Yeah. So there's some great, um, once again, I hear just in the, in the, in the conversations, right? There's a, another term, Mary, that's thrown out there is uh, equal versus equity, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I know that that those two definitions are very different. Um, but some people may see them the same, right? Um, but based on that, um, I think just hold, hold on to that for a minute because we'll get to that, but I do think it's an important thing to call out in this space. Um, okay, really quick question also, how do you define inclusion? So each one of these has their own definitions and we'll just kind of throw that out once again. You can throw that in the chat. Oh, Bonnie, I think I did see that. Safety. Are you saying them now, Robin? I think so. Feeling like you belong. Capacity to participate. Hearing everyone's voices. Inclusion. People feel welcome. Ensuring people feel like a member of a community. Everyone having a seat and voice at the table. Climate of psychological safety. Mm. Embracing what is unique and different and valuing other perspectives. Going beyond the status quo. So I, I so thank you everyone for sharing those with me. I think um, what I'd like to ask, uh, Mary, I'm going off the script a little bit, but what I'd like to ask this group real quick is, as you all gave your definitions of diversity, equity, and inclusion, let me know in the chat box whether those definitions are yours personally or whether they're your organizations. And if they're both, that's fine too. Oh, we're seeing a lot of personal. That's important to know, maybe both, okay. For those of you who said that they were personal, I'm gonna assume then that maybe the organization um, 
that they may not necessarily match. So I'm a little curious to know how how would someone at your organization know what the definitions of diversity, equity, and or inclusion are? I'm just curious. And you can put that in the chat or someone can share that as well. How would someone know at your organization? If I were brand new walking there, walking in, and I want to understand how that organization is defining it, how would I know that? Most answers are that it's it's not very defined. Um, some organizations have a DE and I may have a DE and I statement. Um, currently working on a plan. Uh, it's not always clear. <laughs> it's not really defined. I don't know. <laughs> this is um, really good information. Yeah, absolutely. This is what we talked about, right, Marianne, in the beginning about yeah. when can't you can't reconcile what you don't recognize, right? That's right. So first thing is we got to recognize, right? What's our starting point? So it's great that people here had some de working definitions, their own personal definitions. And then the question becomes, well, does my organization have them? And if not, right, how would I know what they are? And if they do, do they align with my personal definitions, right? So those are some interesting questions to, to um, walk through. And one of the things I was gonna say too is, um, I know Mary, you had asked me to also share a little bit about um, our county, right? And some of the work that we have been doing. So when we got here to, when I got here to Ottawa County, um, one of the things that we had in place was a vision statement for our organization. And the vision statement um, is really very simply put, where you belong. And I found it interesting because there were some terms being thrown around in an earlier definition of inclusion, I believe it was, it was belonging. And so I was actually gonna pause for one second and ask this group, because this is a new term, um, when you think of the word belonging, what are some things that come to your mind? Like how would you define that outside of course, those who said inclusion, just curious. So you can throw that in the chat real quick too. We'll see what we get belonging as a definition, how would you define that? Safe space can be yourself, feeling comfortable, feeling welcome, accepted, valued. Yeah, a lot of feeling words, right? Yeah. Something you feel, comfort is something you you just feel. Safety also is something that you might feel. Um, acceptance also is another, it's something you feel. You can't put it on paper and measure it, right? Like diversity, you can measure that, but, but, but longing is a little different. So thank you for sharing that. Continue to put stuff in chat, obviously. Um, we will we'll continue to read those, but what I would like to share with you here is now knowing that you know our county has this vision. The other thing that we were put uh, in motion was to recommend some definitions as well, some working definitions. And we, I thought I'd just share these with you or at least give you guys an understanding of kind of the stuff we're trying to work around. So here at the top, you see diversity. Diversity is the representation, strictly representation. And it's something that, again, you can measure through numbers. And it, again, is tracked typically by race, gender, sexual identity, age. Now, this list is not exhaustive. These are examples, and I think I heard some of these same kinds of uh, definitions earlier when we threw out how you, how you define diversity. Um, and in addition, 
diversity happens to be also thought, right? I'm sure you've heard of that before, diversity of thought. And one of the things that um, for us at the county, we also recognize that you can have two people in the, same, in the room and they may actually look the same. They may even be from the same gender, the same race, maybe even the same age, but we know that they have a diverse experience. They may come from diverse backgrounds. They may even have diverse cultures. And the fact that they may even be working in very different departments carry a diversity of understanding, right? So diversity is very broad. And um, we, we wanna make sure we, we name all of those as we think about diversity. Um, I'm gonna jump to inclusion before I get to the belonging, but inclusion for us is, it is a participation, that is a behavior. It's something that we find achieved when diverse populations, which typically we do have, are involved in decision-making that impacts our policies and practices of the organization. So when we see inclusion, it's a behavior. It's something that we know. So remember we asked that question, how would I walk into your organization? If nothing is stated, maybe overtly, is there behaviors occurring, um, whether it's in meetings or how people show up that I might recognize, wow, this is a very inclusive space. But in, the, in addition, we also have equity here. And what we've decided to look at equity as, it, it actually is a requiring of examining our structures and systems that have traditionally impacted um, disparities of historically underrepresented groups. And in some respects, equity might prioritize our diversity and inclusion work. So not only are we being inclusive of all diverse representation, but are there people who have been underrepresented historically that may not have traditionally held spaces at tables or decision-making processes, right? That should be there. So I, don't, I wanna make that little distinction, right? Um, and there are organizations who can have diversity without inclusion. There's gonna be organizations that will do DNI without equity. There's gonna be some, again, who will call out equality as equity. I'm not here to say what's right and wrong, but what I am here to say is it's really important that you know what your definitions are and to understand where your organization's definitions are. And if they don't have them stated, I think it's really good for you to understand what is the default. Every organization has a default position. It's what we say we do without thinking. It's what's already preset. And that doesn't mean, again, it's right or wrong. I think it's just a matter of being able to recognize what that is without trying. And you'll, as you look at your own definitions, you'll have a lens to kind of um, assess that through. Um, for those who are wondering about the difference between equality and equity, um, one of our administrators once said, equality is being able to give everybody a pair of shoes, but equity is making sure that those shoes fit. So you can see the difference in that, right? It's one thing to give everybody something that's equal, but are you going to make sure that I don't get size? you know, five shoes that I can't even wear and the person next to me gets the size that fits them so they can continue to do their job and contribute um, equitably in that, in that system. And then last but not least, we, um, as you saw, we decided to incorporate the definition of belonging because our vision statement is about that. So if you look here, we have kind of two different definitions one of them comes from Dr. Darnisa Amante. Um, she's a scholar who wrote, belonging is the ongoing culture that's created to have all people feel welcome across difference. So I highlighted that word or italicized that word ongoing. This means this is not a check the box. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that has to be continually checked in and it has to be a culture that you're setting. And then she called out the fact that it's manifested in four ways. The first is the relationships. So what kind of relationships do you have in your organization and with each other? Also, the conversations that are occurring 
right, in your organization. What's being said and what's also not being said. There's this other thing called physical space. So I don't know if anyone in this group here has anything to do with setting up, um, you know, everything from colors on your walls to signage to bathroom spaces to hallways to lights and sound and fixtures, right? Believe it or not, physical space tells people, do you belong here or not, right? What am I seeing myself on the wall and the pictures? Is the language that I speak something that I can read and feel like I belong here, right? If I'm in a wheelchair and I need to get to the bathroom, is the stall all the way in the back or is it something that's put up front that I don't have to go through 50 people? Um, And then written word right? These are things that we take for granted every day, but there's etiquette in how we might speak or share or write about each other and policies. Is it something that is reflected that makes everyone feel they belong? So we also looked at um, Christiane who wrote, belonging is the emotional outcome that people want in the organization. So Marion, you heard, right? The word feelings, right? This feeling of wanting to belong and the safety, being able to show up as our authentic self, that is truly an emotional outcome. And people don't feel safe to do those things unless, right, there is this culture of belonging. So um, I thought I'd just share that with all of you today, knowing that not all of you have this, but that's okay, because we're going to talk a little bit about what can we do in that case. So I'm going to move to the next slide here. Um, Here's another quick, uh, great perspective by Arthur Chan. For those who don't like a lot of words, this is straight to the point. Diversity is a fact. Equity is a choice. It's an intentional choice. You don't have to do it, but it is a choice. Inclusion, again, is that action. What are we doing, that behavior? And then here's the funny thing. Belonging is that outcome, right? That emotional outcome. I also thought I'd throw this in here as a resource to all of you going back either into your personal or your workspaces. We use this Um, when we want to get a temperature check on how do our employees, how do our communities feel when it comes to belonging. We took Dr. Darnese's quote and we broke it down into four categories. And we asked people as you're walking through your organization or whatever context you're in, it could be a school, it could be at home. Write down, right, what kind of conversations are you truly having that you can recognize whether or not it's creating a culture that has been created for all people to feel welcome? What conversations should be we be having, right, to create that safety, that emotional space that people feel that they can really come into the, the workspace authentically? Then you have to look at your relationships, do a quick audit on the relationships that you're having. Are they with the roles or are they with each other? Are they uh, authentic? Are they more professional? I think it's important to list or name those. And then again, I gave some great examples of physical space. Of course, there's many more. And then written word. So I thought I'd throw this in here. Marianne can make this um, available to you as a resource when we're finished here. So, Marianne, you want to explain what we're going to do here next? Yes. So we're going to break up into small groups for about 10 minutes. And the task of the group will be to discuss the process. uh, What is the process and path on your DE&I journey? So just to have a a sharing and we'll I'll open up those um, breakout rooms in just a moment and then we'll also let you know when it's time to come back okay so 10 minutes the question is what is the process and path for your DE&I journey
So Robin. Yes, Marian. I think everybody is now in their rooms. <laughs> They're in uh, groups of four or five oh. people. Great. Um, it looks like there's 43 people still in this room now. Oh. So for anyone who has not accepted joining a group, um, the invite was sent out to everyone. Hmm. So I'm not sure how the people who are left in this room are, looks like they're, the numbers are going lower. You have to, for everybody still hearing us, you have to accept the invitation to go into a small group. So it looks like I can see certain people who are still waiting to join, or they may be away from their computers. <laughs> that could be. Yeah. So I also sent the question as a broadcast email to everybody in the breakout groups. Great. That's great. Yeah, so the groups look like they're all different sizes. Hi, I was just in group 11 and uh -huh. I was speaking, but nobody had their camera or sound on and I don't think they could hear me. So I just. Oh, wait, no. Wait. Oh, you're Amy. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. They're muted with camera off. So I just don't know if. They didn't figure it out. I figured I waited a couple of minutes and then thought, well, maybe okay. maybe it's but, not working or maybe they stepped away. I can go back in. I just weird. didn't. Uh, it they had to have accepted it. Yeah, you have. Um, so yeah, there were four of us in there. Uh -huh. um, exactly. And I unmuted and then put my camera on and just started talking. But then I realized no one's <laughs> responding. <laughs> So maybe they can't hear. And I did say, can any can anyone hear me? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. No worries. No worries. I uh, that's totally fine. They may have stepped away, or I could go back in and see if it's working now. I just thought, well, I'll. I'll well, they, yeah, that's good to know, though. Yeah. Well, what has your process and path been on your DNA? Well, Amy. Thank you. Yes. I'd love to know. I'm I'm our HR director and I work at the Chittenden Solid Waste District. And we unfortunately are just starting down this path in terms of um, we had DEI training for our entire staff. And now we're just at the point of forming a committee. And our first meeting is coming up to sort of set goals. And so this is great. This falls right in line with just helping to what are we doing? <laughs> so, um, and what and what do we want the outcome to be? And how can we make um, positive change and um, for the community as well? So we're okay. we're in the beginning. It feels like we're in the beginning stages, at least for our small organization. Um, well, and and Amy, just so you know, uh, the presentations and recordings from our first two trainings are on NERC's website. Yes. I will be sure. I can't seem to get to my list right now to be able to post those in the chat, um, but I will send everyone the links. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And um, someone said they lost sound and rejoined. Someone else said they were in transit and couldn't be part of the breakout group. Another person said they're they've opted out of the breakout. Oh, okay. So maybe it was so, just, uh, that's fine. I know where I am in my process. And, path, <laughs> so. <laughs> and I have learned a lot from the last two trainings. So I really appreciate it. And this one already so far. So it's really helpful. 
Oh, that's good. I'm so glad. We never know if we get people that are, you know, further along and they're like, oh, we already know this. So yeah. it's tricky. It's familiar, but we just really haven't implemented anything. So this is really helpful to just get that group started. Mm, that's great. Okay. And Allison McIntyre, I'm going to, I'm here. I was asked oh. to join you. Yes. What was the question again, Marianne? Yep. Um, what is the process and place that you are at right now in your DE and I creating your DE and I path? Oh, okay. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Well, I can share. Um, right now, I'm involved in multiple areas of DNI. Um, so I work for the state of Michigan and I am um, currently involved in uh, DEI efforts within uh, our Department of Management, Technology and Budget area, as well as the um, Energy Great Lakes, um, Energy Great Lakes and Environment uh, Agency. So 